Hey guys, what's up? Kuro here from Kimono Dungeon Fursuits. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for tuning in and welcome. In this week's video, I wanted to discuss lies all fursuit makers tell themselves. So we all kind of have little white lies that we tell ourselves in our everyday lives, either to make something easier or because we are ignorantly, foolishly, whatever word you want to use, foolishly hopeful that despite all of our trials and tribulations, this time things will be different. So the first one that I'm going to mention is that one yard of fur will be enough. And it could be one yard, two yards, three, four, whatever increment of yards it is. But I always lie and tell myself that less than what I need will be enough. And sometimes I can get it right, but as a person who always is trying to save as much money as possible, since this isn't like a super lucrative business, we try to, you know, keep extra expenses to a minimum. And overbuying fur is definitely a problem I've had in the past that I don't always want to happen. I'll lie to myself and say that mm, for a partial, I only need one yard of that color. Especially if it's a multicolored suit, I'll try and justify spending less rather than more. And sometimes that doesn't always work out. And then I screw myself over and end up having to pay for shipping twice when I could have just bought two yards of fur in the first place and only paid for shipping once. So when in doubt, really you should be buying too much. You'll save money and headaches and stress and hassle in the long run. Plus, you won't have to worry so much about playing Tetris with all of your pattern pieces to try and get that much more fur to fit when you go to cut it and you won't have to rearrange all of your patterns. And it's just much less of a headache when you plan properly. Next up is, I don't need to measure this twice. It's in the right direction. Now, this one, I kind of do a lot when I'm in a rush. I'm going, I'm cutting, I'm planning out all my pattern pieces, and I swear to God, I've marked the fur direction properly. I've marked my pattern label, and then when I go to flip it, somehow things get all jumbled up, and I actually accidentally cut in the wrong direction. And now I have this whole ass piece of fur that I've cut that is now unusable to fit any other fur piece going the wrong way. Nothing more frustrating than that. And I end up burning through more fur than I actually intended to when I very easily could have checked my measurements twice. There is a rule and a saying in sewing is measure twice, cut once. This is also for carpentry and any other skill or trade that requires you to cut things. You can always take more off you can't put something back together. So unfortunately in these situations where I rush, it ends up coming back to bite me in the butt. And I'm sure I'm not the only maker who has done this before. Next lie on this list kind of goes into actual fursona creation. And that's just a few more markings here and there. Won't hurt, right? We kind of forget how painstakingly tedious it is to sew extremely small or extremely intricate fur markings. When I made Kuro, I was all gung-ho on all of these massive amounts of markings and colors and furs, and Kuro took a long time to make. While I love really complex suits and intricate markings, there is a point where they can become too much. And if you're not a super skilled maker, they might be a little bit more stressful. Sometimes less is more. And this isn't always the case. There are very talented makers that make suits that are quite honestly something I could not pull off. And I'll put a couple examples up here on the screen. I do aspire to be this level of complexity one day, but sometimes, especially if you're on a time crunch, having extra markings or adding extra markings here and there might not have as big of a payoff as you would think. For example, if this is a pre-made, pre-mades are already hard enough to sell. So in my personal opinion, I'm going to do as much as I can to make this suit to the quality and level that I want without investing extra time for 
five to ten markings that will not increase the value of the suit versus the amount of time that I've spent sewing those markings. So sometimes less is more. The next little lie that I tell myself is shipping won't be that expensive for this fursuit. Maybe I can offer free shipping. Holy shit, $300 to ship a fursuit. Yeah, never mind. The buyer can pay the shipping. And as much as I'd love to offer free shipping to all clients that buy a fursuit, with the way shipping has been lately, post-pandemic, during the pandemic, basically just because shipping companies suck in general, shipping of fursuits can get quite expensive, and some makers will bake that into their price, but I personally do not. So, there are times where I want to be generous and offer to pay shipping or include it in the price, but with the rising costs of shipping, transportation, materials, gas... All of that fun stuff. Fursuits really add up when they ship, especially if you are buying a full suit with padding. That is a very large box that you might have to ship, and you may even have to break it up into two boxes. This is a little lie that isn't really a lie, but more of a good faith gesture, goodwill gesture that I want to do one day is offer free shipping, but I can't see that happening anytime soon with the way the shipping world is going and the cost of goods rising. And hey, before I go on to the next little white lie here, I did want to chime in and say if you are enjoying this video, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. It really does help get my videos out there to other viewers like you who might enjoy my content. So thanks so much in advance if you do. Now let's get on to the next little white lie. Next little white light on this list is, oh, this potential client who has been talking to me for the last three months, who keeps saying that they are going to buy a fursuit from me, is definitely going to pay this time. They've talked about it for three years, and they're going to pay soon. And if you are a fursuit maker or someone who takes commissions in general, you know for a fact this is not true. There are some clients that play the long game, and they might be saving up, and just kind of want to keep in the loop with you and keep chatting with you, but most of the time, those that want to buy a fursuit will buy it right away, or within the first week to month that they start talking to you. So, there are some people that they just are in love with the idea of buying a suit and will talk to makers for months or years on end, saying that they're going to do it and they just never get around to it. It is best to not get your hopes up and bank on someone buying a suit until they have 100% bought, paid for it, and the suit is in their hands. Anything can happen within the time frame between when the suit is made and finished, to when it is shipped to them, to when it is paid off, and all that good stuff. Don't get upset if someone doesn't buy a suit from you. They may not be able to afford it. They may want to get one one day, but aren't ready to pull the trigger. They may be a kid. They may have an accident happen or something where their money had to go to something else. So it is usually never anything personal. When in doubt, just keep your expectations low and you'll be pleasantly surprised when someone does buy something. And the last little white lie that I tell myself is probably the biggest lesson learned that I had to do, uh, the biggest regret I have. And I don't do this one anymore, but there's a reason. And that is, it's okay to use my fabric scissors on paper or metal or something that they are not intended for. Just this one time. They won't break. And I did that. And they have a huge dent in them now. Don't use the fabric scissors on anything but fabric. And I swear to God, if anybody touches my fabric scissors and uses them, they will die. There are plenty of cheapo scissors that you can buy to cut fabric, to cut paper, and you can buy wire cutters to cut wire and metal and all that stuff. Don't be a fool like young fursuit maker me and ruin your good scissors. Bad idea, because they can get expensive to replace if you don't buy them cheap or on sale or inherit them or save up for them or whatever, especially if you have multiple types of fabric scissors. So just keep that in mind. Separate your fabric scissors from the craft and regular household scissors. Someone who might not know that those are your specific fabric scissors might go and use them too. So guard those suckers like your life depends on it. And it might even be good to have spring-loaded shears or scissors for cutting foam. 
They have been a lifesaver for me when I cut foam uh, because my hand really starts to cramp up if I cut the foam for too long. But those are the little white lies that I tell myself as a fursuit maker. Do you have any little white lies or fibs that you tell yourself either as a fursuit maker, artist, or really anything in general in life if you're not a fursuit maker or a furry? Share them in the comments below and if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing as it does really help out my channel and helps get my videos out to other viewers like you who might enjoy my content. So thank you so much in advance if you do, and I will catch you next week in the next video. For now, I'm Kuro from Kimono Dungeon Fursuits. Bye!